Hi everybody, so Heidi here. This tutorial is on adding a distressed look to denim in Illustrator. Uh, first things first, if you want to follow along with the video and get the sample file, click that button right there on top of the video and grab that right now before we get going forward. Uh, all right, so let's just dive in. What I have here is this denim shirt already drawn and I want to add some distressed texture to it because it looks really flat. So I pulled this image off the internet just for visual reference to see like, you know, kind of where some of the distressing normally is. And you can see it's kind of on the front um, bodice portion and a little bit onto the shoulders. So let's go ahead and look at some techniques for adding that. I have the shirt on one layer and I'm gonna just add the distress um, artwork on another layer just for organization purposes and not to accidentally bump the file around. Under normal circumstances, I would probably put it right on top of the garment and group it, but for now, let's just work on a different layer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna use the pencil tool and I'm just gonna draw some like organic sort of blobs on top of the shirt. And then those are gonna be the distress marks. So um, kind of based off of what I saw from that original photo, you know, I've kind of got like a nice one that kind of comes in here. And what I'm then gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna fill it with a gradient. So I'll open up my gradient. If I don't have that, I'm just gonna come up to window gradient. Okay, so that'll open up that. And I can just click on the gradient to open up that. Now from the gradient slider, um, what I really want is just white. I don't actually want any black. So I can click on this and I can double click it and I can say actually I want that to be white. So that'll change that to white. And so now basically I have a gradient that goes from white to white. And um, I'm gonna actually change this from linear to radial. And you're actually not really seeing anything happen because it's a white to white gradient, you don't see any transition. And what we actually wanna do is we wanna go from white to white, but one of the whites we wanna have an opacity of zero. So it's gonna create like a faded out feather look. So I'm gonna, um, with this uh, gradient bucket selected, you can tell which one's selected by which one sort of has the darker outline with the black fill on the top. Um, and it's either one you can, put in a value of zero in this opacity field right here. And now what you see is I start to get this um, sort of burst of color with the solid white in the middle and the faded white on the outer edge. Now what I wanna actually play with is this field here, the aspect ratio. And so as I bump this up or down, you can see it kind of squashes the circle into more of an oval shape. Um, and so I've kind of squashed it, but it's on the wrong directionality. So now I want to play with the angle. And so I'm just going to put my cursor in here and I'm just clicking the up arrow key on my keyboard. If I hold the shift key, I can increase it in perfect um, 10 degree increments. Now I could have known that that would have been a 90 degree shift to go from horizontal to vertical. Um, if you want to just, if you need it to go at a random angle, you can kind of play around with that number. And now I can see my aspect ratio actually got a bit too small. So let's bump this up a little bit to something a little more like this. Now I feel like this solid one in the center is a bit too um, bright. It's kind of glowing quite a bit. Um, and I'm actually gonna kind of bump this over. I'm gonna change this opacity to maybe 50. Um, and that actually looks pretty good. The other thing you can play with is let's bump this back to 100. And we have our gradient sort of um, burst faded texture right here selected. And instead of just playing with the gradient, I'm gonna come up to the opacity here in my control bar. If this is not showing up for you, you can come up to window and open your transparency panel. Okay, and from here you have the option to change the blending mode. So if you're familiar with Photoshop, this is similar. Um, you can play with a couple different settings depending on what the garment is underneath and what the shape is that you have on top and whether it's white versus black. A couple of these settings might work better than others. So sometimes you just have to play through. Um, sometimes you want darken, sometimes you want multiply, um, sometimes you want lighten, sometimes you want overlay. So you can kind of click through these and see what works better. In this example, I know that I want overlay, so I'm gonna click that. Now it got a little bit too like bright. Um, and so then I can play with the overall opacity right here. And so let's drop this down to 50 and see how that looks. So that's actually starting to look pretty good. We'll come back up to my gradient here and I wanna change this. I wanna make um, the transition from the solid white to the transparent white a little bit, um, happen a little bit quicker. Cause right now it takes a really long time um, and I'd like to fill in a little bit more distress. So if I just slide this slider over you can see I start to add a little bit more of the solid uh, white to the center and less of the distressed, excuse me, the, the faded out, the zero transparency on the outside. 
Um, and you can kind of fuss with this all day long until you get the perfect look. Um, but let's come back to our transparency panel. Where are you? There you are. And I think I'm going to drop this down even a little bit more, maybe like 30. Um, you know, depending on how distressed you want your garment to look, you can kind of play with that. So it's just a matter of kind of creating these little blobs. And I kind of want to put one up here on the shoulder. And I'm going to use my eyedropper and I'm going to inherit the attributes from this uh, gradient here. And you can see if I open up my gradient, what it did is it grabbed the gradient appearance. It does not inherit the angle or the aspect ratio. So those are ones you kind of have to play with on your own. Um, and so I can sort of squash this and then maybe rotate it a little bit to an angle. Um, and then it does also inherit the opacity. So it did inherit the overlay blending mode and the opacity of 40. Um, so that looks pretty good for the shoulder. You know, and the great thing with this is you can always come back with the pencil tool and kind of reshape this if you want to pull this down a little bit further. Um, you know, you have the flexibility to kind of continually change this all day long. So we can go ahead and continue to add these little texture overlays and add all this distress to our garment. Okay, and then um, I want to show you a couple cool other tricks before we finish up here. Um, another thing that I want to do, and let's just go ahead and copy this one over. I just am going to hold the option or alt key on my keyboard while I click and drag and copy that over. And let's make this a little bit bigger. I kind of want this to be a little bit more prominent. Okay, so that's starting to add some dimension and character to our garment. Um, Another cool thing that we can do is you'll notice often in denim that you have sort of this like rippled linear looking texture. And I, I will apologize, I'm not actually a denim designer, so I don't know some of the correct terminology for this, but it's sort of like a linear faded lines kind of running along a lot of seams where there's been some distress and some rippling and wrinkles added. And so there's a cool way you can do that. Um, I've already added it on this layer called distress because it takes a couple minutes and I didn't want to waste too much time on it, but I'll show you quickly how you do it. Um, and then I'll show you what it looks like. So what I first did was I just took the pencil tool and I used a fill color of white and I'll go ahead and do it off the artboard because if I draw with a fill color of white on the artboard, we won't be able to see anything. And I'm just going to draw these little like circular blobs. And again, we want them to have a fill color of white. Um, and they're very like sort of oblong, right? They're kind of emulating those textured lines that you see when denim's been sewn. So we'll select all of those and again, give them a fill color of white. And then I'm going to come over to my brushes and I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag and drop this into my brushes panel. I want to create this as a pattern brush. So I choose pattern brush. I choose OK. And um, I do want to add a little bit of spacing in between this. Otherwise, this little motif here and this motif here will butt up right against each other. So I'm going to put about, I think about 15% spacing should be sufficient. And that'll just add a little buffer between my first, um, the start of the pattern brush and the end of the pattern brush when they seam up against each other. Everything else I'm going to leave default um, and just choose OK. So from here, you can see if I just um, use a pencil tool or a pen tool or anything and I draw a path, and then I assign that pattern brush that I just created, which is this one, pattern brush four. You can see that that creates those lines, um, kind of those organic little bubble lines along the path. So what you can do is you can come along these seam lines where you want to add that texture and you can you know, either freehand it if you want it to look really organic, or you could just copy and paste the same path that you had used to draw the stitching. And then you're gonna apply that brush. Okay, so apply the brush. Now it's a bit large, so let's drop this down to maybe 0.7. Um, maybe that's still a bit big, how about 0.5? All right, I think that's a little more accurate. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna come up to our opacity, and we're gonna choose overlay, all right? And then we're gonna choose uh, maybe 40 again. And perhaps for that subtle detail, it's a bit, um, if we zoom in really close, we can see it, but zoomed out, we might miss it. So you can play with the opacity until you get something that looks a little bit more accurate. And that actually might be a bit too bright. So, um, you know, all of this is just trial and error. There's no perfect science as to what opacity or what overlay method you wanna use. You just kind of play with it as you go through. So I'm gonna delete that one. 
Um, cause I've already added it to every single, uh, seam on my garment and I've done that in the distress layer. So I'm just going to turn this on and you see, watch how that changes. It just adds a little bit more dimension to your drawing. It looks a little flat and now you've got a bunch more dimension where all the seam lines are and you've got your texture added. One last cool trick I want to show you for adding distress texture. So, uh, let's say kind of in this elbow crease here, we want to add um, some kind of highs and lows where you might have highlights and shadows. And so I'm going to come over to my brushes panel and I've got some basic brushes in here already loaded. Um, you can kind of play through, um, browse through all the different brush libraries that you have. Um, I think that some of the, uh, excuse me, in the artistic, the charcoal, um, pencil ones are good to look through. So these have kind of really cool textures that you can add to your garment. So let's just try this charcoal rough option here and I'll grab my pencil tool and I'm just going to draw like a short little path right here where the elbow creases and then I'm going to apply this pattern brush and now I'll come up to the opacity and I'm going to drop this down to, um, let's see, overlay. And let's drop this down. You know, again, you can kind of just drop it until you get something that looks good. And so now, whoops, now you've got these extra little clumps of either bright or light. So, you know, in this instance, it's a highlight because it's white, it's lighter. Um, if you wanted to change it to a shadow, you could just change the stroke color to black. And once you change it to black, you'd want to change the overlay from, let's see, maybe to multiply. So this is where, depending on if you want a highlight versus a low light, um, and that doesn't look that great. I think maybe we need to drop the opacity a little bit. Let's try 20. I think that looks a little bit better. Um, you can kind of play with this. And so then again, this is something that can constantly, you know, you can make this a little bit bigger. And so it's basically just taken the texture of this pattern brush and created this little blob. So instead of manually having to draw these little um, motifs and little clumps of dark and light sections within the garment, you can just add these using the different textures that are automatically available in the brushes. So play around with this using the different opacities, um, the, the, over, the blending modes and changing your opacity, and then also working with the gradient options that you have Okay, and playing with the angle and the aspect ratio of those to fill these drops of color um, on top of your garment and add some more dimension and distress look to your denim design. So again, grab the file to download. Um, it's free, just get it and you'll be able to kind of dig this file apart. I'm gonna go ahead and actually finish the entire sketch and the finished sketch will be available. Um, but uh, those are some cool tricks to add distressing to your denim sketches. Thanks for watching everybody. I'm so Heidi, I'll see you soon, bye-bye.